Uh, first will be Peter Tomacek from the globalization team here in Prague together with uh, his colleagues and he was talking about translating open Solaris. Please. Thank you. So, welcome everyone. My name is uh, Petr Tomášek. I am from European Globalization Center of Sun Microsystems. And uh, today I'd like to talk about how Open Solaris is being translated and how, and how can you, the community, contribute to the translation. As you can see on the slide, I have three names. So, uh, together with me, here is also uh, Robert Malovec, uh, my colleague in Sun, who will, at the end of the presentation, show you a small experiment. Hopefully it will work. But I'm warning you that it might not work. It can completely break. And uh, also Aleš, who is here, managed this initiative and uh, he will help me answer your questions at the end of the presentation. So, what's on the agenda today? Um, I don't have many slides, so you can be uh, quite uh, uh, calm that uh, this is not going to be very long. And uh, actually, this is maybe the least technical presentation of all the presentations here, because uh, as I've seen, uh, all my predecessors used uh, some source code in their presentation, and uh, I have none, so uh, this is going to be really a simple introduction for every user of Open Solaris. So uh, I have set three goals for this presentation. First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, the Sun's globalization department. Uh, what we do and uh, how the work we are doing is important to Open Solaris and uh, how can we help the community. Also, the second goal is uh, to uh, maybe give you an introduction to the whole globalization industry. Uh, what's the whole globalization about, and what are the issues, especially for the Open Solaris project. And again, at the end, we would like to show you some demo, but don't count on it. So, <laughs> uh, the mission of uh, Sun's globalization is, together we open Sun to the world. Uh, the most important word here is maybe open, because uh, it means uh, that uh, we are doing it like transparently, we are using open source software, and uh, we also are doing something, because that's, that's a verb, right? It's, it's some action, so uh, this is just a short mission, and uh, together means that we are uh, a team of around 200 members. We span across eight countries, and uh, maybe the biggest part of it is based here in Prague, in the Czech Republic. So many of us from Sun Microsystems are from globalization here, so if you need uh, any globalization help, you can ask us. Uh, there's not only me, but also I can see all my other colleagues here that are from globalization. Uh, so what are we actually doing? Uh, the simple phrase would be that we are delivering, delivering Sun's products to the global market. But uh, if uh, you remember uh, Jim's presentation, it was also about the importance of globalization. And uh, maybe the most important thing is that we are really uh, delivering those products uh, to uh, places where they are still not accessible today. And uh, maybe you can't imagine, but there are really people who would like to use the product, but are not able to do so. Um, one of the main products we are working on are Solaris, uh, Java Enterprise System, Java Technology, and many, many others. And also, I'd like to point your attention to our external website. It's uh, located at the Sun uh, Developer Network, also known as SDN, and uh, what you can find there. Uh, there is the globalization know-how we are providing you, and uh, also you can ask our globalization experts 
you can ask them any question you need, which should be about the software globalization. We are getting many emails from India, but uh, not many from Europe, so please go ahead and uh, ask how you can internationalize your application. And uh, on this slide, I'm presenting some uh, key terms uh, which are really uh, used in the globalization industry every day. And uh, understanding of these key terms is maybe understanding the whole uh, globalization. First of all, there is the maybe most important one. It is locale. And uh, from the slide, you, uh, it might look like that uh, locale is just a short abbreviation of uh, the language and territory and uh, maybe the encoding, but it's more than that. Uh, it actually is a whole set of uh, data, files, and maybe uh, source code, which uh, the computer needs to correctly communicate with the user anywhere in the world. And uh, most of all, it can be data about the calendar, the currency, alphabet, but uh, there are also uh, uh, user interface messages uh, and many, many more. So, local is uh, really uh, an important data. And uh, globalization, it's also a nice term because uh, when I talk about globalization to people who don't really know about uh, my work, they think about McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and so on. But uh, in uh, our industry, globalization is just an umbrella term for internationalization and localization. So, internationalization is actually what the application developer is doing when they are preparing their application for international use. Essentially, it is uh, just separating the source code from the text resources, from the text files in it, and the text uh, is saved into just a plain text file. Uh, the important thing here is that uh, each programming language is using a different format. So this is the first complexity, but uh, we will talk about more complexities later. But just for an example, in uh, Java programming language, uh, we are using uh, property files or property classes and um, those, those bundles are called resource bundles. But in C programming language, there are PO files and there are many standards of PO files and so on and so on. And uh, the localization is, uh, if the internationalization was done well, is just a mere translation of the text files. So we translate those text files into the specified language. And now we are coming to uh, the issues uh, in Open Solaris Translation. Today, uh, Open Solaris Translation is uh, not very easy. We have, uh, we can call it a decentralized translation model. Actually, it's uh, first of all uh, about where the translations are coming from. You may know that uh, there are three major components in Open Solaris. Uh, the desktop applications, you all know Firefox, right? Thunderbird. So these translations are uh, coming from their respective communities and as well uh, another major component, OpenOffice. They're also translating it and uh, uh, their community is translating it and the translations are stored in their OpenOffice workspace. And also uh, the third major component is uh, the uh, ON which is uh, the abbreviation for Open Operating System and Networking. So these uh, applications are also translated and th those translations are at some different, uh, different, uh, different place. And uh, it also is uh, important to uh, imagine what we need to translate in Open Solaris. There is not only the user interface, uh, there are also many, many pages of documentation and also many web pages on the internet. For example, the Open Solaris portal at opensolaris.org. And then there is the Solaris heritage. 
uh, I'm talking about uh, 11 languages which are listed here and uh, Solaris is actually fully translated into those languages so that's why we are calling them uh, core languages but uh, there are many many other locales and uh, there are also uh, uh, Solaris is also supporting those locales but we call it uh, just a partial support because uh, there might be no translation at all but the local data is in Solaris. So when you log in, for example, uh, in the Czech locale, you can see that, uh, for example, the date uh, is correct. Uh, the names of weeks can be there, but uh, the, the user interface uh, might not be translated. And uh, the next slide is, uh, is a slide where I'd like to prove that uh, translating such a large project as Open Solaris uh, is mm, not possible without machine assistance. Um, it might be very easy to uh, see translation as, you know, I just take a text and look at it, translate it, and give it back. Well, that's how the translation process works, but. Uh, for such a large uh, project as Open Solaris, um, we must use computers, and uh, we use them to remember those translations. Uh, we use uh, a huge uh, translation memory, which stores not only uh, a dictionary, but it stores uh, the whole segments, uh, and uh, there it is also using some. Uh, special uh, algorithms for uh, understanding if uh, the segment uh, is similar to another segment and uh, how much uh, the translation matches and so on. We also uh, would like to track uh, our progress, so we need to uh, uh, use some project management uh, features. But uh, the problem is that current uh, open source uh, software is uh, not powerful enough. Uh, all the features that we uh, need to use uh, are currently not uh, supported by any open source software. So it implies that the powerful software is a commercial software, which is not free. So uh, that's why we internally are using uh, commercial software. I will talk about it. First of all, uh, let's see uh, how the open source free software is doing. Uh, I'm uh, taking on Poodle, which is a very simple multi-platform application written in Python. And uh, it is being used currently to many, many uh, open source communities. And of course, uh, OpenOffice and OpenSolaris. It is, what I like, uh, it is very easy to use. It has a nice and easy translation editor. But uh, after a while, we have come to many limitations in Poodle. Uh, we have seen that uh, it supports only some file formats, only some standards of those file formats. And we had to do many pre-processing. Uh, the maintenance work was getting uh, really tedious. And um, so uh, these were the issues that uh, were coming uh, after the work on uh, Poodle that we are thinking about some other solution that uh, might work better. Uh, also, we couldn't uh, share the translation memory, so the community uh, had some translation memory on Poodle, but we have also a big translation memory internally, but we couldn't share it together. So that also is uh, as a big point. And also, Poodle is uh, a web, web application, so you need to uh, use it online. You need to connect to the internet to, to translate. So uh, there is still space for improvement because some translators can work offline only, or some uh, translation can be do done only offline. Uh, here is a screenshot of Poodle, how it looks like. This is a screenshot uh, of uh, the Open Solaris projects. Uh, 
it's very blurry, so I don't uh, think if you, if you see anything, but uh, there is a list of languages we are translating. And uh, the last column is about the progress. And you can see that uh, the Czech, which is the third row, is uh, quite ahead. Uh, it's in 93%. Uh, this is tracking only uh, the ON part of Open Solaris. So when this is 100% uh, complete, you will see all OM applications translated in OpenSolaris. Uh, you can check that web page. That should work now. You can also register and contribute uh, at this moment. But uh, I have mentioned uh, some, some uh, issues. And uh, on this slide, I'd like to summarize it again. So we have text resources which are scattered across different workspaces. Uh, we have a separate translation of uh, user interface, of documentation, of web pages. And uh, actually, uh, we really can't integrate those translations immediately. I think that's what the community would like to see. Uh, when they translate anything, they would like to see it integrated immediately to see if it's working, if, it's, uh, if it makes sense to translate it that, that way. So uh, what's our objective? Our objective uh, was first to utilize the powerful globalization management system that we are using in Sun. Uh, we are using IDM uh, World Server. And uh, this is a quite heavy, heavyweight uh, tool. And, but it's commercial, and we can't uh, use it externally. We can't uh, give it to the community. So uh, we would like to utilize it somehow. And uh, we would like also to keep the key advantages of Portal, which is the simplicity, uh, the web interface, the easy translation editor, but the other goals are uh, we would like to translate both software messages and documentation at one place. Uh, because uh, by utilizing uh, uh, software translations of user interface and documentation together, uh, the translation is really uh, more efficient. And we would like to deploy the translated text resources possibly every day, like a nightly build. So this is uh, our first chart. Um, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> it might not look like, but it, it is. So uh, we start as the open source community on the top left. We provide translations through the community translation interface. I've also provided the URL, and this is also be the part of the demo. So we use the translation interface to uh, send the translations into our world server, which is uh, an in-house, in uh, uh, not, not public server. Uh, it then trans uh, transfers those translations to the Open Solaris workspace with all Open Solaris messages. Then the translations go again to our internal SunW packages builder. It builds uh, a SunW package, and it sends it to the IPS repository, which all of you can use to download the translations, upgrade your open source distribution, and see it translated. The benefits of uh, such, a, uh, such a proposed model are that uh, all of our globalization tasks uh, will be handled by world servers. So, uh, we will use all the powerful machine translation features, all the project management, and uh, all the administration configuration will be centralized. So uh, that's, that's uh, maybe the most uh, important benefit. We also uh, can share the translation memory. That's also a big thing, because uh, uh, the community doesn't need to translate what has already been translated. We also have the translation process standardized, which, uh, well, it's an abstract uh, term, but it means that uh, we are facing our uh, 
internal and external translations as, as one, as uh, if it were the same. So we don't need to uh, create some uh, other special process for the community. We'll just uh, use it as, as it was uh, translated internally. And uh, what's also cool, and uh, this is also why Poodle uh, cannot be used, uh, we can apply this process to not only open Solaris, but other open source uh, communities as well. So this is just uh, uh, something uh, which you can also think about. And uh, we would like also in the future uh, allow offline translation. You can uh, see uh, uh, that uh, online translation is uh, what is, uh, what is the, uh, maybe most popular thing nowadays. But uh, there are some uh, situations where would you like to download the original text, translate it offline, somewhere on your translation editor, some free open source like Omega T, I don't know, and then upload the translated text back. That would be the offline translation. And uh, that also makes sense, for example, for a documentation because uh, that's, that's the whole uh, big uh, text which needs to be translated. So. Now, as you can see, I'd like to uh, give the speech to my uh, colleague, uh, Robert, who will uh, show you the demo of the proposed solution. And actually, uh, I have warned you that uh, it might not work. But if it will work, you will see on your eyes today here that we will translate part of open solaris immediately so we will check whatever part we would like to translate translate it and integrate it into the open solaris right now so watch out okay thank you for a nice introduction so my name is robert malovets and i'm from solaris globalization also and right now i will show you how our proposal works in uh, practice. So what are you going to see? So the translation of the Open Solaris, as we are proposing, is, uh, is done in a couple of steps. In the first step, we will choose a string, which will be localizing. After that, uh, we will uh, do translation, uh, where we have to uh, go to our community translation tool, choose a project and identify the string and the file where the, uh, our string we are going to translate is present. We made the translation. After that, we will uh, initialize the building process, which will automatically create a package with the translation. The package will be uh, publishing in the IPS repository also aut automatically. And after that, we will try to install and or upgrade this package with a new translation. So, first, yeah, we have some difficulties about the resolution, so it's really big right now. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you which string we're going to localize. We're going to localize the command line uh, application calendar. You also, I believe you know this is a cal. And as you can see, uh, when you call this command, you can see the calendar for a month, and we are going to localize this header, uh, which uh, which are the days, for which are the name for the days of the of the week. So right now you can see it's not localized; it's in English. Uh, Robert, yeah, I think it's very nice to see that the month name is localized. Yeah, it's localized. That, that's because correct, but the names of the day are not. This is just a note for those speaking English that don't see the difference. Yeah, I also have to say that the, this, this localized uh, month is localized because it's taken from the local data, not, not, from, the, uh, uh, not from the message, message libraries for this language. So this is why the, this month is localized and this header is not. So, OK, so let's go translate. We will open the Firefox, navigate to our tool, CTI, Sunweird, 
DualLab.com. So and this is it. This is the whole magic. So this is our community translation interface. It's very simple. It's just, uh, it's just you can imagine it like uh, some connection to world server. It's very simple. The uh, whole magic is done in the world server. So this is just a connection gate to the world server. Right now, uh, on this page, is working on the section of projects. We are also working hard on the bring new functionality like uh, searching engine for where the community member can search for a string and uh, it will show up the list of the files where the translation is present. It is not working right now, but uh, the core functionality of the translation is working. So, so this is very nice that it is working. Okay, so here we, ha here we have the projects. We are there right now. Uh, I have to mention that uh, for Open Solaris, not all messages are situated on, on one place, which means that uh, when some community member wants to translate some, for example, uh, he wants to translate, fully translate Open Solaris to one particular language, he has to get the message not from one source, but there are many sources. For example, the first source is uh, a workspace uh, on the OpenSolaris.org page, where are the messages only for the command line applications and for uh, installer of OpenSolaris. Uh, in this demo, in this project right now, we have only these messages. But there is also the workspace which is containing the uh, localization for the, for the JDS, which is uh, the set of the administration desktop applications. And also the docu documentation and so on. So there are many, many sources for that. Right now, we are going to localize the command line application, which is uh, situated here in the project for the Czech language. And uh, so we click on here. Right now, we can see the list of the files. Right now, as I told, told you, that the search is not working. But uh, I know that our, our uh, string we want to localize is situated in this file. So this is. This is, uh, as, we, as we told you, is just pilot, so we're just working on this to bring some mapping of the strings and applications to these files for the community to know what they are going to translate. So we open this file, and uh, here is the, oh, the resolution is really small. Okay, so this is the translator. The translator is really simple. It's divided to two parts, to the left side and the right side. As you can see, on the left side is the source string in English, and on the right side is the, is the translation. Uh, when this uh, project will be done, uh, there, there will be also some strings also uh, automatically translated using the translation memory, as we told you. But right now, the leverage of this translation memory is also not working. So we can translate only manually right now. So this first string is the string you want to localize. So I will just write here the localization. I'll choose the keyboard to check. So the localization to check is OK, so this is the localization to the Czech language of the days. So we have made our translation. So right now, we can save it. When we click on the button Save, our translation is stored to the world server. Do you have a question? Yes, this is also, yes, but uh, right now, I'm talking about the local, yes, but this is the Matter of fact, not localization, but internationalization, which is the fact of the, uh, the local data. So right now we are translating, so we can just, by the translation, change this, this functionality right now. OK, so we have saved our localization. Maybe uh, we can use this uh, moment to, uh, again, uh, back to the slide when I was uh, talking about internationalization and localization. The localization is about translation only in the ideal world where the developer has done the internationalization correctly. 
but here the author of the calendar didn't. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, really, we call it internationalization bug, which means that we as uh, the translators cannot do anything about it. We just can call the developer and tell them, please internationalize your application because we in the Czech Republic can't use it. It is starting with Sunday, not Monday. So this is really the first step of internationalization where the developer needs to know what to do in order to make it uh, usable in the international world. Does it uh, answer your question? Okay, thanks. Okay, so go ahead. Right now we are going to to propagate our translation to workspaces and uh, to make a package. So right now, here for the purposes of this demo, we have here the link which will initialize the building process. In the final state, there will be no, this, uh, this link will be not present because we are planning to build these packages not uh, on a demand every minute or something like that, but uh, for example, once or twice a day. So right now I can start the building process clicking on this button. And this is the whole magic. So the building process is starting and this process will take a couple of minutes. It takes right now about four minutes. So right now I can show you what's going on on the next slide. So we are on a point number three. We are building a package. And uh, this is I. This is just a small modification of the of the of the graph you already seen. So we just made a translation uh, using the community translation interface. Right now we are in this state, so our message is propagated to message repository. Also, the building meshing is starting to building the the whole sources. Uh, from taking the, our translation from message repository, and after that, it will be published to IPS. So, right now, I'll show you our testing IPS repository. You can see that right now there is 45 packages, which are mainly the, which are mainly the multiple versions of the Czech packaging package. Includes the command line command line translation. After the building process and publishing will be done, <coughs> you will see that this uh, number will change to 46. So we have to wait right now. So I can tell you right now what we are going to do after it will be done. So we will use the package manager. Yeah, I have to check keyboard. So. Okay. Yeah, sure. So no, we are creating the package which is also present in Nevada. So in Nevada, the package with the command line uh, sources or command line strings are is the special package only including this uh, this translation. Uh, yeah, yes, but uh, I was familiar with this uh, designing of IPS, and the idea was to use filters for this. Uh, so basically, you are publishing one package calculator, and under this package, you have multiply filters for separate languages, so filter, Russian, Chinese, and so on. And this is one package, it's not multiply packages. So for example, in package manager or in command line, you will see this as one package, okay? And you, then you can apply filters to install separate languages. So your system is aware of that? So we are now using, you know, the package maps from the Nevada, so if uh, it works in Nevada, it works also for this proposal. Okay, so you are not using new features from IPS uh, in that way? Not right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the package manager will show up. 
So you know the thing uh, why this demo, sh uh, why the possibility the demo will not work is hidden in this point. You know because the package manager is not very stable right now. You can see already it freeze the window. So this is why you know it shouldn't work. You know all the workflow is working. You know the translation is made, the package is created, also published, but. Uh, this step with the installation of the package may freeze, so this is what we are afraid of. So, okay, we are using here our repository, which uh, has to be set up as a new authority. So, as you can see, we have set up our authority as a new, as a the new line in the authorities list. So let's take a look if this, the package is already done. OK, so package is there. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, we can reload the package manager. And uh, the package manager will, will resolve this new package as an update. So yeah, the window is already freezed again. Come on, come on. And finally, you can see this green point, which means that the package has a new actualization. So we can download this package. It also takes some time. OK. So this is a new version of the package. We can install it. The installation is pretty fast because not all the package is done only, but only the one file we already made the uh, translation. So, so it's so fast. Okay, so right now we can test our localization if it's there. So we call right now. Okay, we just check if we are still in our local. Yes, we are in the check. So we call the calendar, and we can see that our localization is there. <laughs> So okay. that's it. <laughs> uh, so pat in the back, Robert. And uh, now we can show last slide. Last do, slide. Do we have any? I think this is it. Yeah. So if you have, this is just, just some print screens, you know, if our demo will not work. So I made some print screens to, to show you what happened and well the done. stuff. So well done. So. This okay. is it, yeah. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, please, any questions, comments, suggestions? I will hand you the microphone and uh, maybe Robert or Alesh will answer. So, so. Okay. Um, just wondering when you can implement this and get it outside and get community contributions. So the question was when is it going to be implemented and done? Yeah, so right now it's, it's out. We are just, you know, putting a new functionality in there. So as I was presenting to you, it's open. It can be used for everybody. Just uh, the projects has to be set up. Right now there are only the uh, example files for the testing and validating that our proposal is working as we expected. So it's just a proof of concept right now, but uh, we believe that uh, it will be working in the nearest future. So in terms of Open Solaris, you would place this inside of a project. Um, so, would it, so would it actually live inside of the uh, localization, the internationalization and localization community as a project? In other words, how would the community find this? So uh, we wasn't really. Uh well, uh, I'd like to say here that uh, this is still uh, an experiment, and uh, at uh, the end, when we when we see that this is working, we will certainly evaluate it and compare it with uh, many other solutions that are still uh, available. And uh, after we evaluate it and we see that this is really doable, we can then uh, go on and uh, you know maybe think about uh, doing it as a project in uh, in open source. So uh, this is, I think, uh, still uh, not decided yet. 
you know, we are still right now using the Poodle and uh, Poodle's functionality from the translator's side is almost the same like this, just uh, uh, our proposal has some new benefits like the pre-translation, automatic pre-translation using the translation memory and also the building the packages and this is just a new, I how can say, I can say it's a new approach how to translate. So right now we haven't decide, decided yet uh, when it will be, you know, uh, you know, when the poodle will end and this time. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, I saw there was another question. So uh, Canonical and Ubuntu caught a lot of hate for their Rosetta tool because it was proprietary and it belonged to a corporation. And a lot of free software projects uh, thought, well, forget it. We're not cooperating with that because we don't see where our translations are going and we're not getting anything back for it. So how do you hope to avoid the, the Rosetta trap? Okay, so do you have any suggestion? <laughs> do I have a suggestion? Um, yeah, make sure that your relationship with the upstream is really good and make sure that you have well-published mechanisms for the translations that happen to get back into the free software projects. Because most of the large free software projects have their own mechanisms and their own translation teams and the whole stuff. Um, hey, and uh, you know, if, uh, translating Open Solaris is also something that benefits uh, SUSE. And similarly, the SUSE work benefits Open Solaris. So you've got a lot of different parties to cooperate with. I don't have a magic, magic solution to that, though. Uh, all that I can uh, add to this is that uh, we are also tracking efforts of other open source communities, and uh, we are looking at how they they are doing that, and uh, uh, we certainly would like to offer something which is uh, uh, better than that. But uh, uh, first of all. We would like to solve, you know, uh, the doability issue. We just like to see that we uh, have uh, the tools that can actually make it. Because uh, if uh, the community starts translating, that will be really, uh, you know, something very, very new, and uh, it can be very mass, you know. And uh, uh, if we have the tool and the processes in place, then of course uh, uh, we will see what what all we can do to uh, help the community uh, use it. And uh, well, we'll, we are still uh, maybe not aware, but afraid of how uh, to present it to the community to let them uh, not only accept it but also. Uh, maybe give us feedback or maybe cooperate on it or maybe, you know, develop it together. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, um, if we um, look at other open source communities, we see uh, processes like send the translation to some coordinator through an email and he will integrate it somehow. And uh, I think we are offering more than that. So. Uh, I, I see a bright future. <laughs> okay. So, any any other question? So, I'll start with you. Uh, you mentioned that the Czech uh, translation has, is, is complete by uh, about 93% at the moment. Uh, can you give an estimate um, how long it um, took to get that far? So. Um, in general, it took uh, about six months, and um, uh, I would say four people were working on this. So it's a, uh, as for um, about estimation about how many hours they spent during the week. The week, I, I would I would say, uh, let's say, ten hours per week for four people for six months. So one more question. 
I was involved in some translation and we are missing tools and it's really great what you are doing, but I wonder if you will mm, give this to the community, who will control the translations of, of uh, this tool? Because uh, I know like Launchpad in Ubuntu, uh, the people are voting for translations, you don't have such uh, functionality, so who will actually check if people from out uh, from community are doing the right job? Uh, this is the first question, and the second, uh, how does it scale? Because building one package takes around four minutes, so if, for, let's say, I hope 1,000 people will use this tool uh, at the same time, time, how this will scale? Well, the, question, the answer to your second question is like this, that uh, the whole process, uh, uh, four minutes, it's not uh, but by taking or making the one package. The four minutes takes uh, the building holder all the building the whole workspace with all the languages the package is made in about uh, two seconds you know so uh, so I believe this is a qu uh, answer to your question number two and uh, answer answer to number two question number one is like this that uh, as I told this is just a proposal this is just a pilot it has only the core functionality and we are planning to do something like that like uh, the authentication system and some managing tools for community members and uh, some uh, and give to community some some administrator rights for the setting up the the projects for the concrete languages and like this. So this is answer to your question. Okay. <laughs> Small question regarding the tool. We saw in the example that there are strings which are still needed to be translated, and then the translation on the right side. Um, sometimes translations are context sensitive. So is there the ability for a translator to see the context where this string is being used? Yes, this context is uh, in, in many ways stored as a comment in uh, this uh, uh, translating files and also we are trying or we, we are making or working on uh, to include this to the to the to the this editor but right now it's not there but we are planning to do this hi in Linux there is the same application and it is already localized why you just don't take the localization from Linux and copy it to Solaris. Yeah, uh, this uh, we are talking about the localization of the Solaris parts of the strings. You know, Solaris is including some some uh, sophisticated applications like administration of this stuff, which is not uh, included in Linux. So this tool can be used for the some uh, strings uh, localization, which is uh, special for the Solaris and not included in the in the. So yeah, this is just you know the example of how it works. You know, just uh, just it was uh, used for the demonstration of how it works. Uh, may, may I add uh, something more? I think the the major problem is license. So uh, uh, we cannot combine the the translation content from you know Linux uh, community to 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 Solaris. Because as far as I know, this is under license uh, as well, I mean the translation, so it cannot be mixed and combined together. Okay, so I'm sorry, but uh, last question, please. Um, so you have showed us how to automate and speed up the localization of some text, but I think the problem starts with internationalization, especially small and medium kind of programs, I know this from my own programs, sometimes PO files are 10 times as big as the actual binary, and what can you do if there is a, an application that you want to put into or OpenSolaris that is not internationalized? Um, if you have all these nice translations, but half of OpenSolaris is still only English, what can you do? It's still just a mixture. Do you have a strategy for that? Uh, no, we don't have right now. <laughs> I can say, you know, this is just about uh, proposal for translation. You know, the inter internationalization is just uh, is something different, you know. So we can't do anything right now with this. <laughs> okay, so that's all. So thank you for this insight to the globalization work. Thank you. And
and we will continue with uh, Michael Pritsch about printing with Open Solaris. And I think he has to prepare some printer right there. So give us one and a half minute or so.